This tutorial demonstrates how to set up iForge Ahead to automatically send reminders to your clients about their upcoming appointments. The reminder system runs once each day and the system will use your settings to determine who should receive a reminder each day. Once you have created your settings, the system will then take care of everything else for you automatically. As we get started, let's begin by looking at the three levels of control you have over the reminder system. At the system level, you'll have a number of options that will apply to all reminders that meet your criteria. Below that, at the contact level, you can set the type of reminder that each of your individual contacts or clients will be receiving. You can have some set to receive email reminders, others to receive text, others for both email and text, and others for no reminders. And finally, at the individual appointment level, if needed, you can go to an individual appointment and turn off the reminder for that one appointment. So let's get started by returning to iForge Ahead and on the full screen side from anywhere in the system use the settings menu and select all settings. From here click on settings for appointment reminders. This page allows us to work with the system level settings and is basically a series of questions you'll work through as we go down the page. The first set setting simply turns the system on or off. When it is off, no reminders will be sent out and you can't really work with any of the controls further down the page. So let's begin by turning it on. And our next section allows you to monitor what the reminder system is doing on your behalf. The first option allows you to receive a single email each day that will list all the appointments that were processed on that day and which ones received reminders. The second option allows you to receive an email copy of each reminder that is sent out via email. When you're first getting started, we recommend that you turn both of these options on, which will allow you to get a copy of what your customers are receiving via email and monitor the system to make sure that uh, the parameters you set are giving you the results you'd like. The next question allows you to set the number of days before the appointment date that the reminder will be sent. If you'd like to change the default value, simply select the new number of days in the drop-down list. Now we'll scroll farther down the page. And the next setting allows you to specify which types of appointments should receive reminders. Initially, they will all be set to receive reminders. I'm going to leave reminders on for my personal appointments so that I myself will get a reminder sent. I'm going to leave them for my standard, but I'm going to uncheck this box to turn them off for tentative. That means that any appointments that have a tentative type in the system will not receive a reminder. The next section allows you to construct the contents of the email reminders that will be sent out. There's a subject line and the actual body of the email message. You can click in either of these boxes to change the values as much as you'd like. I want to point out that there is a percent symbol in the message and as explained on the left, that is a placeholder when the system constructs the actual reminder, it will replace the percent sign with the actual appointment date and time. So that percent sign needs to appear somewhere in the message. You also have an option to include horses scheduled. If you check this box, then the names of the appointments that are listed as scheduled for that appointment will also appear in the message after the date and time. 
Once you have these settings as you'd like, simply click the Save button. We also have an option that you can quickly send a sample email reminder to yourself simply by clicking this button here. It should be populated already with your email address that's on file, but if you need to, you can change this and then click the button and at that moment it will send you an example of the email reminder. Let's scroll farther down and we'll get into text messaging. Unlike emails, the text system iForgeAhead incurs a charge for each text that is sent out from the system. So if you'd like to send text messages to your clients for their appointment reminders, you'll first need to subscribe to this service. For just $1.50 a month, you can have unlimited text message reminders sent. And we bill that annually, so it's $18 per year for this service. We're going to go ahead and set up the rest of the system, but again, no text messages will be sent unless you click this button to subscribe. The next section allows you to set the contents of your text message. It works very similar to the email content we were working with above. It's basically usually a little shorter message since it is sent via text. It also will include the percent symbol, which has to be in there somewhere to hold the date and time. And we've added some additional information that your clients should not reply to that text. And we've constructed your name and phone number in the message. Again, you can click in here and change this as much as you'd like. As with the email reminders, there's an option to include the list of the horses that are scheduled in the message. And when you have these settings, click the Save button. We also allow you to send a sample text message to yourself at this time by simply clicking this button. Now, the last section on this page starts to get us into the contact level settings. Returning to our diagram, everything we've worked with so far are the system level settings. Now we're going to work with the individual contact level. This question allows you to specify a default type of reminder which will be used when you add new clients into iForge Ahead from this point forward. The best advice is to simply select the option that will apply to most of your clients. This means, I'm, in my case, I'm going to say most of my reminders will go via text. And so when I add a new customer in from this point forward, that customer will be set for text reminders, but I can change that if necessary. Our next step is to work with the individual contacts by clicking this link. This page will list all of your active clients, and there could be more than one page, and it allows you to specify what type of reminders they will be receiving, and make sure that we have the correct contact information to get those reminders to them. You'll be able to make changes to your individual contact settings on this page one record at a time using the Edit Pencil, or you can work with groups of records using the Action Panel. Let's begin, since I said that the majority of my clients are going to receive reminders via text, I'm going to begin by marking all of them for text. You can do that by checking the All box, and that will select all the records no matter how many pages there are. Once those are selected, I'll go to the drop-down list in the Action Panel and choose Set Reminder for Text. Selecting that option, now the system has been updated and all my contacts are set for text reminders. It's showing some, us some other information we'll need to deal with shortly, and I'll come back to that in a minute. 
I'm going to refine my settings now by working with groups to change the reminder type for some of them. I'm going to start by selecting a group of suppliers that I'm never going to send a reminder to. And once those are selected, I'll use the same drop-down box and select Set Reminder for None. Now that change has been reflected for those three records. I'm going to set a couple more down here and I'm going to change their type of reminder to text and email for that group of records. Now, let's look at the information in these two columns. This is saying where the system will be sending the reminders to. And if it doesn't have the information it needs, it displays it in red. Let's work with this by clicking the pencil symbol for this one contact record. And this is actually my farrier business here. And it's saying it doesn't have a phone number flagged for text messages. In the green area, we can change the reminder type for this record. We can change the email address if necessary. And below that, we have a list of the phone numbers on file for this contact. I can click one or more of these phone numbers to be used for texts. And if needed, I can click the pencil symbol to add a new phone number at this time. Once the changes are complete, click the Save button. And now it is showing in black, meaning that everything is set to go. We have the phone number we're going to send the text to. If you have information displayed in gray, it's simply telling you that we, the system has information to send a reminder to that address, but the reminder type is not set for email reminders. So that's fine. Now besides checking these phone numbers for text messages one at a time, we have a tool in the action panel that will allow you to mark a group of them. Let's click that button and we'll get a dialog box here that is listing all the types of phone numbers that you're using in your iForge Ahead records. Using this list, you can select the type of phone numbers that should be used for text messages. You can select one or more at this time, and then you'll click this button to mark all mobile phone numbers as used for text messaging. If you ever need to undo one of these changes, this button will do the opposite, and it will unmark them. We're going to say all of our mobile numbers should be used for text, and click that button. Now that has taken care of much of our red um, missing information. As you can see, we found mobile numbers for all of these contacts, and it's displaying so that you can verify that's correct as far as where those text messages should be sent. So you'll continue to use those techniques to refine the settings in this page. Now, if you have a case where you don't have the information you need right now to change the missing information in red. That's okay. You can leave it and the system will still run and process all of the other reminders. It's just indicating that we can't send an email to this person until we get an address. So you can come back at any time and update this information. As we wrap up, I want to show you the last level of control that you have for message reminders. We've looked at the system settings, the individual contact settings, and there is one level additional for at the individual appointment level, which is in there just in case you need it in the future. Returning to iForge Ahead, I'm going to go to the schedule. And this option simply lets you turn off the reminder for an individual appointment if you need to. From the schedule, I'll double click on the appointment I want to change. And if the appointment reminder has not been sent, it will show you a status under the appointment type of what's going to happen with that reminder. To change it, I'm going to click the edit symbol. 
and under the date and time I'll simply uncheck the send reminder box and click save. Now when we return to the detail level it indicates that a reminder will not be sent for this appointment. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for choosing iForgeAhead.